Hi there, this is Terry from stampinmagic.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today's project is this beautiful handkerchief fold card, sometimes called a napkin fold card. When this card is closed, it measures six inches square, but it opens out into a full 12 inch by 12 inch sheet. I've decorated it with some of our Nature's Poem designer series papers and I've also used the Rooted in Nature stamp set. If you would like to make a box to hold this card, there'll be a link at the top of the screen to a video I made previously showing you how to do this. I'm starting with a sheet of 12 inch by 12 inch Tranquil Tide cardstock. Now before you do begin, just check that your cardstock measures exactly 12 inch. If it's out, even just slightly, then this will do funny things when you come to fold your card. Now I'm scoring this on two sides at 3 inches and at 9 inches. Now I need to do some diagonal scoring and I'm going to use my diagonal plate for this. Now sadly this is retired from Stampin' Up! But bear with me, I'm going to also show you a couple of different ways that you can do this. Using the diagonal plate is by far the quickest and simplest way to do your diagonal scoring. So insert the plate into your Simply Scored tool and then we're going to score at 6 inches and 9 inches. The 6 inch score will go through the point where your existing score lines already cross. And then your 9 inch score will dissect the square that's already been created on the corner. Okay, so again, 6 inch score and 9 inch score. So you do that on all four sides if you have the diagonal plate. If you haven't got the diagonal plate, then you will need to mark along each edge at the 6 inch mark. Now there's several ways that you can score between these lines. First off, you can use a ruler with uh, an embossing stylus or bone folder. Or you can use my, your simply scored board if you have one. I've put a permanent marker down one of the tracks. And all I'm doing here is aligning those two marks that I've made on the six inch point and placing those on the track that I've marked. And then I just score between them. You also want to make the nine inch score. And this is already marked on the corner. So you'll score from the top left of the square to the bottom right. So you align those points on that same track, top and bottom, and then just place your score. You can also use your trimmer to do your diagonal scoring. And this time I'm just going to align the six inch marks that I've made on my cardstock with the centre of the cutting track on the trimmer. And then I can use my scoring blade to score between them. The same for the 9 inch score. So I'm aligning the top and bottom points from that square onto the track and then this time I'm using my stylus to score between them. I find it useful to mark the centre point on my cardstock. This just helps when I start doing the folding. Now because you've got the 6 inch point marked on the edge of your cardstock, you can just put a ruler between those marks and mark the 6 inch point. You can rotate your cardstock and repeat just to double check that you've got the right point. Now firstly I'm going to score on all of the 6 inch score lines that we made. And I'm going to fold the point in towards the centre and that point should line up with the pencil mark that you placed in the centre of the cardstock. 
So reinforce all the folds using your bone folder. Open up your card and then turn it over so the pencil dot is on the underside and then fold on all the three inch score lines around the edges. These are the straight score lines, not the diagonals. Reinforce them with your bone folder. Open your card back out so it's square in front of you and then grab the center point on each edge and fold it inwards. Your card should now have four small squares on top of it. Go round all the edges and reinforce the folds with your bone folder. Next we're going to do some diagonal folds. So for each square in turn grab the point and fold it back on the score line. Again, reinforce with your bone folder. And that's the basic card complete. Check that it opens and closes cleanly without catching. And then all we have to do is decorate it. I'm going to cover all the triangular shapes on this card with pieces of the Nature's Poem designer series paper. Now I've cut strips of four different designs. Three of them measure two and seven eighths of an inch wide. That's 7.3 centimetres. And from these strips, I'll cut squares. The first two designs, I need two squares. So, so that's two, two and seven eighths inch squares of the designer series paper and I'll place those in the corners of the card. Now some of the designs have a pattern orientation so you need to pay attention to that when you cut the squares into triangles. The wood grain effect paper I need four squares so that's four squares at two and seven eighths of an inch each and again this has a design orientation on it so I'll need to be aware of that when I cut my triangular pieces. For the four larger pieces around the centre of the card my strip measures four and one eighth of an inch wide that's ten and a half centimetres and again I need to cut two squares for this. For the designs with no pattern orientation you can cut them just cut them into triangular shapes it doesn't matter which way you cut them for the other papers that have a one-way design you do need to be careful how you cut these now the wood grain is going to go on all the inner corners okay and I want to cut them so when I'm looking at my card, the design is all going in the same direction. If you don't take care how you cut them, these could be going every which way. So I want the design going from top to bottom. Okay, so to cut these into triangles, you need to place them onto your card and then follow the line of the card underneath. So you can see the top two pieces, the, the top left will be cut from top left to bottom right and the top right will be cut from top right to bottom left. I really hope that makes sense. It's going to be the same for the stripe design as well. I want all the stripes going down my card. I want them going in the same direction. So before you cut your triangle, just place it on your card just to double check the direction you need to make that cut. Before I glue all the triangular pieces into place, I want to sponge the edges and I'm going to use soft suede ink for this. And I have a piece of one of our stamping sponges just to flick across all the edges just to add a little ink. 
I decided to position the pieces that didn't have a one-way design first. So I'm going to start with the larger triangles that go around the centre of the card and just add glue and then position them into place. Then I'll switch to the smaller triangles and these four go on the front of the card. And then I'm going to move on to the striped design and I'm just making sure that the stripes go all in the same direction. And then these can be stuck down. And then finally there's the wood grain effect. Now these I've kept in the pairs as I've cut them and I've also numbered them on the reverse just to make sure I don't um, muddle any of them up. And again I'm just placing them first of all just to make sure that that um, pattern goes in the direction that I want it to and then I'll glue each piece down. For the stamping, I'm using the Rooted in Nature stamp set. I'm using soft suede ink and I'm going to ink up the tree slice stamp, stamp it off and then stamp it down onto a piece of scrap Whisper White cardstock. This will then be cut out by hand. I'm also going to use the soft suede ink to stamp the sentiment and then I'm going to cut this out by hand as well, separating each of the little blocks. I'm using my Stamping Right markers to ink up the tree and I'm starting with Tranquil Tide and I'm colouring all the foliage. As I'm doing this I'm using the side of the brush tip you don't want to use the point because um, you can mash this and ruin it. So always use the side of the tips. And then I'm going to switch to Early Espresso and I'm going to colour the trunk of the tree. And where the trunk runs through the foliage, I'm just adding a little bit of espresso over that tranquil tide ink. I did huff on this stamp before I stamped it down. This will reactivate any of the ink that has already started to dry. Now this stamp set coordinates with the Nature's Roots framelits and there is a die in there that matches this tree so I'm going to use that to cut it out. And then I have the Stitched Seasons Framelit dies and I'm going to use the largest of them to cut out two Tranquil Tide mats. I also used the same die to cut out some of the Designer Series paper but I didn't actually use this in the end. Then I'm going to use the middle size of those dies and I'm going to cut a white mat. And then I'll run that through the Big Shot with the Subtles embossing folder. To make the belly band for the card, I have a strip of A4 cardstock that is 8.5 centimetres wide. Now this could be a strip from your 8.5 by 11 cardstock or it could be a strip from a 12 inch sheet. It doesn't matter. It just needs to be 8.5 centimetres wide which is three and three eighths of an inch. The paper is 12 inches long and it's eight centimetres wide, which is three and one eighth of an inch. So you want to add glue and layer these together so you have a small border of Tranquil Tide at the top and the bottom. 
Now my A4 length cardstock is shorter than the 12 inch so there will be a little bit of excess to cut off. Now this needs to be scored at two and three quarters of an inch and two and seven eighths of an inch and also nine inches and nine and one eighth of an inch. Then you want to fold on each of those four score lines. This is a little tricky because they're so close together, each pair, but just take your time, make sure they're straight and reinforce them with your bone folder. Please ignore this mess on the right hand side of the belly band. I've already stuck this down once but unfortunately I didn't have the camera on. So I've had to pull it apart and I'm going to do it again. Now I'm just going to mention here that the gap you see um, on the belly band at the front, this will vary in size depending on what length cardstock you used. Remember I used A4. If you used a strip from 8.5 by 11 then your gap will be bigger. If you used a strip 12 inches long then your gap will be smaller. It doesn't matter, it's going to be covered anyway. Now I have one of the Tranquil Tide mats that we cut earlier and I've drawn a line, a pencil line, on the reverse down the centre of this and I just used my grid paper to determine where that centre line was. Now I'm going to position this onto my card trying to get it as central as possible so I'm lining up the points and I'm lining up that pencil line and then I can close my belly band now the width of the belly band is the same as the distance between these two points on that mat and so I want to line up the belly band with those points to make sure it's centered every which way. Okay I'm just checking to make sure that the points on that mat haven't moved and that the top and the bottom edges of the belly band are aligned. Once I'm happy with everything then I'm going to hold those two ends in place and I'm just going to use a pencil and draw around each end and then I'll know where to place my glue. So I'm just going to work on one side at a time and position that before moving on to the other. So again I'm just lining up my pencil line and my point and then I'll close my belly band onto the glue and just hold in place for a few seconds. And then I can add glue to the other side. And again close the belly band onto it. Now you want to give that a minute or two to dry before trying to remove the belly band. Make sure it's firmly stuck down. Now because I chose not to use the mat I cut from designer series paper I did run the remaining Tranquil Tide mat through the Big Shot with the Subtles folder and I also did the same with the tree slice that I stamped and hand cut. So now the white layer can be glued onto the Tranquil Tide mat. I've added glue to the tree slice and that can then be positioned over the white mat. I've also added dimensionals to the reverse of my tree. 
The Nature's Poem product suite also includes some twine. Now this comes in a pack of four different colours and I've cut a length of the crumb cake one, approximately 32 centimetres, which is about 12 and a half inches. And I'm just going to wrap this around the mat. And I'm securing this on the reverse with some of our tear and tape adhesive. Then I can remove the backs from the dimensionals on the tray and position that. I trimmed off the excess twine and then secured the twine with a little more tear and tape over the top of it. I glued the three sections of the sentiment flat to the card. And then all we need to do is remove the backing from the tear and tape, add some more glue all over the back of the panel and then position that onto the front of the belly band. The only thing we have left to do now are the inside panels. Now I have three squares of cardstock. The soft suede one is five and seven eighths of an inch square, which is 14.9 centimeters. The tranquil tied one is five and three quarter inches square or 14.5 centimeters and finally the whisper white mat is five and five eighths of an inch square which is 14.1 centimeters now you need to layer all these together I've used the Nature's Roots framelits again to cut out some leaves. Now you have three dies for embossing the leaf shapes and then you have separate dies for cutting the outline shape. So I'm going to add glue to the back of each of these and position them all in the top right hand corner. Then I've used another piece of the Nature's Twine and I've just put a knot in it. What I did, I didn't use the full thickness of the twine, I just um, pulled off a couple of the threads and then knotted them. And I'll position this over the leaves just using a glue dot. I've stamped and cut out another tree exactly as I did before and this I'm going to glue flat to the panel. Then the completed panel can be glued into the centre of the card.
And then we're done. Our card is finished. You can find all the measurements you need to create this project on my corresponding blog post on my blog and there'll be a direct link to this in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.